Kelsey. This is my channel, The Fancy Hat Lady Reads. I am wearing one of my fancy booktube hats, and today I'm bringing you another booktube SFF Babbles video. The booktube SFF Babbles are science fiction and fantasy themed video prompts that are provided by the people who run the booktube SFF awards during the months of the read-alongs for those awards. I will link the group down below on Goodreads so you can check it out and learn more. Anyone can post a video or blog post or whatever your recommendation medium is. And this week's topic is science fiction and fantasy short fiction favorites. Now, I am really sporadic in reading individual short stories. There are lots of places where you can read free science fiction and fantasy stories online, and sometimes I am in the mood, but more often I am not, and I am constantly falling behind on the stories that are online that I want to read. And when I read individual short stories, separate from any collection or anthology, I don't track that reading at all. I don't track it on Goodreads, I don't track it anywhere else. So I don't have any record of what my favorite individual short stories that I've read online have been. Um, so I am going to focus this video more around um, actual books, um, collections, and anthologies, but I'm going to try to bring it back around to things that I know I can link for you to read online whenever I can, because I am guessing you guys probably want that. If you're talking about, in general, which short fiction publications I like, if I were picking a favorite, I would say Uncanny Magazine has probably the closest general literary aesthetic to my reading preferences of all of the ones that I'm aware of. They publish a significant percentage of my favorite authors. Um, it's generally more of a mixed bag for me if I'm just browsing online at any of the other places like Tor.com or wherever. But focusing on actual books of things here, um, I would like to start off just talking about fairy tales. If you have, like, ever watched my channel before, you may be aware that fairy tale-ish fiction, fairy tale inflected fantasy, is basically my favorite subgenre niche of SFF. And I think it often, too often, goes uncommented upon that short fiction is the native medium of fairy tales. And of course I love full-length novel-length retellings and novel-length fairy tale fantasy. Um, but sometimes short fiction really just gets it better for me. So I thought it would be fitting to start off recommending a book of actual original fairy tales that I think might be a good place to start, and that is Wonder Tales, Six French Stories of Enchantment, edited by Marina Warner with a variety of different translators, a different translator for each story. And these are stories from the 17th century France salon tradition, which is a fascinating cultural and historical moment, and it generated some fascinating adult fairy tales. These are not meant for children, and they are literary adult fairy tales. And if you're looking to pick up a book of original fairy tales that maybe you haven't heard of before because they aren't so much in the popular consciousness, um, I would recommend this one. It is not that long, and these stories are kind of fascinating. And I think it's only appropriate to jump from there to a book of fairy tale retellings. In my last video, I wrapped up um, The Starlit Wood, New Fairy Tales, which is an anthology edited by Dominic Parisienne and Novel Wolf. So I will link that wrap up for you because I went into pretty great detail about this book. I at least touched on most, if not all, of the individual stories in this collection. My favorite three stories in this collection were In the Desert Like a Bone by Shannon McGuire, The Other Thea by Theodora Goss, and Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik, which is of course getting a full-length novelization that is coming out this year. Several of the other stories in this collection that I think are also excellent um, have been reprinted in online publications, so I will link those down below. And looking at the table of contents of this book, reminds me of some stories I should link for you that are available online from some of the same authors that are in this book. So this is 
stirring my memory, which is good. Um, Theodora Goss is one of the authors that I mentioned is in this book, and one of my all-time favorite short fantasy stories is probably her um, fairy tale influenced novelette, I think is the length of it. Red as Blood and White as Bone. You can read that on I think Tor.com and I will link that for you. That is a dark fairy tale ish thing and it's wonderful. Sophia Samatar's story in this collection is one of the ones that's available online, so I've already linked that. I will also link for you another story of hers that I remember really liking, which is called Selkie Stories Are for Losers. Cat Howard is is another author in this collection whose short fiction I have generally liked. I've actually liked all of her short fiction that I've read better than the novel of hers I've read, which is Roses and Rot. I'm going to link two of Cat Howard's stories for you that I've particularly liked. The first one is The Key to St. Medusa's, which is a Bluebeard retelling, and then the second one is going to be A Nest of Ghosts, A House of Birds, which is a more recent story um, and not a fairy tale retelling, I don't think. So. That's the Starlit Wood plus a bunch of other things by authors who are in here. Moving on, another short fiction collection that I've wrapped up recently um, was Jackalope Wives and Other Stories by T. Kingfisher. Some of these are stories that were originally published under her T. Kingfisher name, and some of them are stories that were originally published under her real name, Ursula Vernon. Again, I will link the recent wrap-up video where I talked about this in great detail. In that video I linked all of the stories I could find from this that were available online. I think here I will just link a couple. I'm going to link you to Jackalope Wives, the title story, and its loose sequel, the somewhat longer story, The Tomato Thief. Those are both heavily folklorish in style and subject matter, and they focus on a character named Grandma Harkin, who I really, really like. She reminds me of the Discworld witches. Unfortunately, my favorite story from this collection is not available to read online, um, and that was That Time with Bob and the Unicorn, which is just all out silly comedic. Now, in an effort to read more short fiction than I have been reading in the past, I've recently started to sort of try to always have a short story collection going on my currently reading stack, even if I'm only reading a story or two every once in a while in between the other things that I'm focusing on. So right now, the short story collection that I am reading, reading, even though I'm really focusing on other things, specifically I'm focusing on the books I'm reading for the one readathon to rule them all, which is still going for a couple more days here. But the short story collection I'm reading right now is A Feast of Sorrows by Angela Slater. And this collection focuses specifically on sort of dark, haunting, fairy tale-ish stories. I've had it out from the library for way too long and I'm running out of renewals on it, which is why I am reading it right now. But I really liked Angela Slater's Tor.com novella of sorrow and such. Um, and these short stories are sort of a lot more of the same. By the way, I am not talking about novellas in this video, as you might have noticed. I feel like I've read enough novellas that that would have to be like a whole separate discussion topic for me. Uh, but this book, um, interestingly has an introduction by Theodora Goss, who's an author I've already talked about in this video. And it occurred to me that those two authors, their short fiction sort of occupies the same corner of my mind. I think of these stories, for example, being really similar to something like Red as Blood and White as Bone. And they are both authors that I know from their short fiction. They both have published novels at this point, but I haven't read either of their novels. Um, so I've read the first two stories in this collection so far, and those are Sourdough and Dresses 3, which are both fairy tale-ish and dark. Um, Sourdough is about a baker's daughter, and there's, there's some creepy magic. And Dresses 3 seems to be a bit of a riff on the themes and ideas of donkey skin, if you know that fairy tale. But I wouldn't go so far as to call it a retelling. Unfortunately, neither of those two stories that I've read so far are available online, but there is one story in this collection that I know is online because I've read it before, and that one is St. Dymphna's School for Poison Girls, so I will link that. That's another sort of dark fantasy story that I remember really liking. Onto a couple of short story collections that I've read but don't have 
physical copies of here in my hands. I really want to recommend Wicked Wonders by Ellen Clagis. This is a collection that I reviewed a NetGalley arc of on my Kindle, so I will link my full review of that. That was a double review and I forget what I paired it with. Not all of the stories in this collection are strictly SFF, although most of them have some sort of speculative element. There are a few that don't. Uh, one of my favorite stories in this collection was Caligo Lane, which I will link below because that is available to read online. I highly suggest you do so. It's about um, a woman who's practicing some sort of uh, cartographical map-related magic in San Francisco during World War II. The main character of this story actually also shows up in uh, her novella Passing Strange, which I've also read. And then another short story collection that it's been much longer since I've read, but I also rated it highly on Goodreads, um, is Catherine M. Valenti's The Melancholy of Mecca Girl, which I got from the library at the time I read it. I've said before that I don't tend to like her short stories quite as much as her other work, and there were some stories in here that weren't quite my cup of tea, but this was overall still a pretty good book for me. I remember the really standout portions of this collection for me, though, being not exactly short stories, but some of the other things that were in here. Um, this collection had several of Valenti's poems, which I thought were wonderful, and it also ended in her novella Silently and Very Fast. And for me, Silently and Very Fast was like a five-star novella, and even though I said I wasn't talking about novellas in this video, Silently and Very Fast is available to read online in three portions, so I will link all three serialized segments of that novella for you so you can read it. It's science fiction, and I didn't have a lot of science fiction on this list, I realize, but it uses fairy tales and mythology as the means um, of talking about artificial intelligence. There is one more short story of Valenti's that I really like that was not in Melancholy of Mecha Girl or any of the other collections that I've mentioned, and it is called The Consultant, and it's also got like a ton of ton of dense fairy tale stuff in it, and it's very meta. And I know that one is online, so I will link it for you as well. So. I cannot claim that this is any sort of comprehensive, actual, favorite short fiction list for me, um, because I don't have a great memory for the short fiction that I have read, but this is a list of some books that I have read recently, or less recently in some cases, um, and some of the other short stories that I know you can read that these books sort of reminded me of in the dusty corners of my memory. So let me know if you've read any of these or if you're planning to. Let me know if you have any short stories that you think I would really like to read, especially if they're available online tell me all about them. I also own an embarrassing number of collections and anthologies on my to-read shelves, so I am certain that if you stick around, as long as I keep this up with, you know, keeping a short fiction collection going on my currently reading shelf, um, I will have much more short fiction to recommend to you in the future. Also, do you have a method for tracking individual short stories that you read? If so, I would love to hear all about it. I don't necessarily want to add them as books on Goodreads, even when they're available as books on Goodreads, because I feel like it screws up my reading statistics. Anyhow, I hope you're having a nice day. That is all. Bye for now.